Welcome to today's Insta Live. Today we're going to talk about timed intercourse to ovulation. And this is a very important topic for all of you who are maybe trying to conceive naturally. You might be wondering how you can identify your ovulation and time intercourse so that you can get pregnant. So that is exactly what we will be talking about today. Timed intercourse to ovulation. However, to understand when you need to time intercourse to ovulation, you need to understand when you are ovulating first, because that will determine which days are your fertile days. So I would like to, to start telling you, for the ones who don't know me, that I am a nurse consultant and I spend my days helping so many women and couples get pregnant after a journey of infertility. So I have this amazing app coming up, uh, being launched in November, and I'm doing a series of educational videos three times a week here on Instagram. And today I'd like to tell you a bit about monitoring your ovulation. Let's look at the different methods that you can use. What are the advantages, the disadvantages, the accuracy of the results that you get and so that you can finally time your intercourse to ovulation. So before we start, I would like to show you first an image. And this image shows you the menstrual cycle. At the top, you can see what is happening in the ovaries, so the ovarian cycle. And at the bottom, you can see what is happening in the uterus, so the uterine cycle. So in the top, you can see that the follicles start being very tiny, very small, and the follicles have the eggs inside them, and they start growing very slowly over a few days during your cycle until finally the egg is released from the follicle. And that's the image that you can see in the middle. The follicle is ruptured and is releasing the egg and that is ovulation. We know that your fertile days consist on that day of ovulation because the egg survives around 12 to 24 hours and the five days before because sperm can survive up to five days in the female reproductive system. So those are the, the six days when you can get pregnant a month. And then after ovulation, we have the, the follicle there that transforms into this yellow image and it's called the corpus luteum. And that corpus luteum starts produ producing progesterone. Progesterone is a very important hormone that is going to thicken the uterine lining. So you can see in the image below that the uterine lining starts getting thicker after ovulation. And that is to allow the, the egg that has been fertilized to implant in a good, well vascularized with a lot of blood supply, a lot of nutrients to allow that embryo to grow. However, if there is no fertilization, then that uterus lining will shed and that's what you call the menstruation, so your periods. So when we're talking about tracking your ovulation and trying to understand when your fertile days are, we need to understand that all the methods that are available out there are methods that are going to give you some sort of indication of where you are in this cycle at, at every point. So you might get some indication that you are in your ovulation time or that you're going to start your ovulation time in a few days, or maybe you might even get some monitoring devices and indicators that tell you that ovulation has passed. So we're going to go through all of this today. And I would like to share the next image with you. And this image is an image with a lot of curves. And these curves are your hormones because all these changes that are happening in the ovaries and the changes that are happening in your uterus during the menstrual cycle depend on the levels of your hormones. And there are certain hormones that are very, very important for the production and the development of the follicles and the eggs 
for ovulation itself, for the follicle to let the egg be released from the follicle, and also for the uterus to develop and be thick enough to allow the fertilized egg to implant. So here in this image, you can see that initial curve that goes up and it's uh, a purple curve. That initial curve is an increase in estrogen and that estrogen increases in your, in your system when your follicles have grown to a certain threshold and they are almost ready to be, to be released and to be ovulated. So your follicles will produce estrogen and estrogen will be sending a message to your brain, to the, to the pituitary gland to say, look, these eggs are almost ready to be ovulated. So what your brain does is your pituitary gland will produce another hormone called LH. And that is the second curve that you can see here on the screen is your LH hormone. And LH will go from the pituitary gland to your bloodstream and eventually it will reach your ovaries and it will help the follicles to do that final stage of egg maturation and to be released. So you absolutely need estrogen for LH to be produced and you need LH for ovulation to happen. So some of the tests that you are going to use during this time when you're trying to identify your fertile window are going to be based on these two hormones. Do you have an estrogen peak and an LH peak? Because if you have this, then ovulation is going to happen. So you can see here in this image that we have in the middle a blue bar. And those are the two most fertile days of your month. We know that once you have your LH curve, your LH peak, as soon as it starts increasing, you have about 36 to 44 hours until ovulation happens. And there's different sorts of curves. We're going, going to talk about it in a bit, but just know that as soon as it starts, it's the beginning of the curve that matters and not when it reaches the peak. So we know that about a day and a half to two days after we have this peak, we are going to be ovulating. So those are the most fertile days of the month. And if you know that you are in those two days of the month, then you can have intercourse, you can have sex, because the likelihood of you getting pregnant is much higher during that stage. Now, there are certain other methods that you're going to, that you can also use that focus more on temperature. And temperature, you may not be aware, but temperature will be an indication of your progesterone levels in your body. So progesterone, as we were talking a few minutes ago, is produced by the corpus luteum. So it's after ovulation. After ovulation has happened, the follicle that was surrounding the egg will be transformed into a corpus luteum and will be producing progesterone, which here on the screen you can see has a green blue curve. So when your body increases the levels of progesterone, you will have increased temperature. So Again, this is another common way of monitoring ovulation. But as you can see here, because progesterone happens after ovulation and temperature happens because of progesterone, this will be a late indicator of ovulation. So it's not a good indicator that ovulation is going to happen. It's indeed a good indicator that ovulation has already passed and you can no longer get pregnant in that cycle. So I'm going to share my next image with you because now I want to drill down to the specific ways of monitoring ovulation and I want to talk about cervical mucus, temperature and LH monitoring. So I'm going to talk about each one of these. And so we have here first the cervical mucus, which is one of the easiest ways to track your ovulation. And it, it, it's very, very much used everywhere in the world, basically because you don't need to spend any money to track your cervical mucus. You can do it uh, in your own timing at home and you don't need to spend any money uh, to do that. The way it works is you need to check it every day. So you're going to check with your fingers 
the cervical mucus that is present just outside your vagina, or you can even insert the fingers in your vagina. And you're going to see the consistency of the mucus. And there isn't a certain amount of mucus, of cervical mucus that is normal for all women. All women are different. So you need to understand what is normal for you. And it's only by measuring and looking at it every day that you will be able to start noticing the differences and we, you will start noticing what it looks like, what, it's, what is the appearance of the mucus when you are in your fertile window in those six days of the month. And what we know is that the cervical mucus during that time becomes more watery and stretchy. So like the image that you have here on your screen, you will see the last image, it's very stretchy. So that is what it's going to look like during your fertile days. This is particularly important because we want the cervical mucus to be watery during the time that you are ready to receive sperm. By being watery, the sperm will be able to swim a bit more easily through your vaginal canal up to your uterus until it meets the egg in the fallopian tubes. So when the cervical mucus is not watery, it actually can prevent the sperm from moving higher up in the cervical, uh, in the vaginal canal. So it's important to check if your cervical mucus is normal and it's important to check that it's stretchy and you know that when it's stretchy and watery, you are close to your ovulation time. Now the next, uh, monitoring strategy that I would like to talk to you about is very commonly used by a lot of people and I know there are a lot of healthcare professionals that even recommend these, um, this strategy to check your if you are ovulating and you may be guessing what I'm talking about. I'm talking about basal body temperature. So what is basal, basal body temperature? It's all about measuring your temperature when you wake up in the morning before you do any sort of activity. So you can't do anything else. You need to measure it straight away. And you can measure your temperature, you know, in the usual places. And what you're going to notice is that your temperature is usually low during your menstrual cycle. And there will be a point when it's going to reach the lowest point and this is called the nadir, N-A-D-I-R, nadir, the nadir point. And then after the nadir point, there's going to be an increase in temperature. So here in this screen, you can see that there is a lowest point and after the lowest point, there is an increase in temperature. And as I was explaining uh, a while back, this is because of an increase in progesterone in your system. Now, this is important because you usually have an increase in progesterone after ovulation has happened. So you will only know that you have ovulated and that you will see this increase in temperature after ovulation has happened. That means that you are no longer able to get pregnant in that cycle. And this is very, very important because if you are using basal body temperature to monitor, monitor your ovulation, you are only able to say if you have already ovulated that cycle and you no longer have any chance of getting pregnant in that cycle. This is very, very important. It's called a retrospective method of checking ovulation, that ovulation has happened in the past. This is very important because the fertile days are before ovulation and not after ovulation. And I find this is so important and there's so many people who are not talking about it. Secondly, you need to be aware that there's a lot of things that can impact the results of your basal body temperature, um, which you need to be aware of. So for example, let's say if you went to bed later that day, that night, or if you want to stay in bed an hour later during the weekend, or if you have infection, if you've traveled abroad and you are in a different time zone. 
So there's all sorts of reasons that could affect, for example, temperature outside or temperature in the bedroom. So many reasons that could affect your basal body temperature that it makes it not so good, a not so good indicator of ovulation. Actually, it only has a 22% accuracy rate in terms of identifying ovulation and it's not very good. But there's still a lot of people doing it. So I feel it's important for me to share the results of research and what is the, the high quality research and what is recommended in terms of identifying ovulation. Now, I would like to tell you next one of the highest methods to detect ovulation. And that is without a doubt, measuring your LH hormone in urine. So you might be aware of those urine pee sticks that you can buy over the counter in any pharmacy. That is the highest method of identifying ovulation before it happens. And that's because LH increases, that surge increases, between 36 to 44 hours before you ovulate, giving you a day and a half, two days to actually have sex when you can get pregnant. So there's the accuracy rate is around 97 to 98%. It's really, really high. So if you have an LH surge, you are very likely to have an ovulation in a day and a half or a couple of days after. So this is a very good method. However, there are different sticks that you can buy over the counter to measure your LH. And I would like to tell you a bit about those as well. So you have ordinary sticks that have one line or will tell you if you are positive, if you are ovulating or negative, if you are not ovulating. So for some women that works very well. And that's because the test will detect LH, LH hormone in your urine when it reaches a certain threshold of 30 or 40. However, in a lot of women, that threshold, they never reach that threshold of 40 because their baseline is much, small, much lower and their peak is much lower than 40. So they might see a negative and they might feel that they are never ovulating, but in fact they are ovulating because it doesn't matter if it's 40 or 20 or 100. What matters is if the peak is two and a half times higher than your baseline. So it's very important that you know what your baseline is, your exact number, and see if you have a surge, a peak of LH that is 2.5 times above that baseline. So this is super important. So those pee sticks, they work for most women, but they don't work for a lot of women who have LH surges that are lower than the, the threshold of 40. And also it doesn't work for a lot of women where the baseline is above 40, where they see positives all the time and they think they are ovulating uh, every day or several times in the cycle. However, for those women, it doesn't work. And women with PCOS tend to have this problem. So they tend to have LH baseline values that are higher than usual. So if you're using those urine sticks that only tell you if you are ovulating, yes or no, you might find that you're not able to, to tell exactly when you are ovulating. So it's good. It works for most women. However, it doesn't work for everyone. However, there is a way, there is a way forward that I would like to tell you about, which is a monitor called MyLotus, which identify your exact value of LH. And I feel this is one of the, the, the biggest breakthroughs in terms of monitoring ovulation is identifying your, your values, the value that is unique to you. So this machine means you're going to start monitoring your ovulation, your LH hormone, um, a few days before. The machine will tell you exactly when you start monitoring your LH in your urine, and you're going to understand what is your baseline. For example, I know that my baseline is six, and I've measured for a few days, and it has always been six. And then there was a day when it went, went up to 40, and then it went up to 80, and then 100. 
So I could l see that I was having my surge and I knew that in a couple of days I was going to have my ovulation. So for me, this is the best way to identify ovulation would be using a method that tells you when you are about to ovulate and tells you exactly what is your LH value in your urine. Because if you have an LH, you will have an ovulation. It's 97% guaranteed that you will have an ovulation. Without LH, there is no ovulation. Now, all women are different. I know I keep saying the same, but that's the truth. We are all different. And I would like to show you some LH curves as well, because you might see that some women might have a curve and your friend might have a different curve. So I'd like to tell you a bit about that. Research has shown that we have different curves. You can see here at the top, we have a spike curve where you have your baseline values and then it will go up very quickly in a peak and then it comes straight down. And that happens in the majority of women. Now, type two, you have here in the middle of the screen is called the biphasic curve. You will see that it will go up. It may not go as higher as the other curve and then it will go down a bit and then higher up and then down again. And the third type of LH curve you have here is called a plateau and that's because you go up and the values will stay higher up for, for a while, a couple of days and then start going down. Now this is important because we are all different. So we all can have different LH hormone tests. However, what matters is when the curve starts increasing because we want to know when it starts increasing and then ovulation will happen around 36 to 44 hours after the beginning of the increase of this curve. And we know that we only need two and a half times higher than our baseline to trigger ovulation. So for me, as a nurse, I would say that this is probably the best way, the most accurate way to identify ovulation. Today, we looked at cervical mucus and just to summarize, cervical mucus is important because we want to make sure that the cervical mucus is stretchy and watery during, during your fertile window. Being stretchy and watery allows the sperm to swim easily up to your, through your vagina and through your uterus. We've talked about temperature. Temperature is a retrospective method of identifying ovulation, meaning that it tells you that ovulation has happened in the past and you no longer have any chance of pregnancy during that cycle. So it tells you that it has passed and it's a response to the levels of progesterone that are produced by the corpus luteum uh, after ovulation. So temperature gives you an indication of about 22% accuracy that ovulation has happened in the past. It's not a good indicator of ovulation. It's a good indicator of pregnancy. If your temperature goes up and stays up for a few days, then it's a good indicator of pregnancy. However, you can also measure your HCG levels, which is the hormone produced by the fertilized egg, the embryo, when it starts implanting. So again, temperature is still recommended by, by a lot of healthcare professionals but it's not the most accurate method to identify ovulation. And finally, the last one that I absolutely love has 97 to 98% likelihood of identifying ovulation ahead of time, giving you time to time intercourse and get pregnant is measuring your LH in your urine. So if you want to know more about it, they have an amazing page called Milo, Milo World. I will tag them in comments after this video as well. And it's just amazing because you get to understand what is your baseline value and you get to understand what is your uh, peak value as well. If you have any questions about monitoring your cycle, understanding your ovulation or understanding what is the best way to monitor your ovulation in a way that works for you, send me a DM. I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. And I would like to end today's Insta Live just by telling you that something awesome is coming your way.
And you might be wondering, what is it? Well, it's called the Enhanced Fertility Program. And it's an amazing program that has a lot of resources to help you during your fertility journey. We are all about making fertility support accessible to everyone. So we have five modules in an online course with trustworthy evidence-based information. We have 22 interventions. What makes a difference when you are trying to conceive? You have access to support groups, wellness circles, and also consultations with, ac with access to professionals. So the app is coming in November. However, you can have early access to the app by going through the link in bio and subscribing to our newsletter because you'll receive a couple of emails and you will be given early free access to the app. Exciting, right? I will be sharing more information about the app in the coming weeks. If you have any question, just feel free to get in touch with me, send me a message or just write it down in comments. Thank you so much for watching today.